table. Uh -huh. Is there something that you manually you putting underneath cover to cover the bucket tray? No, or there's is it automatically there's something in front of the slide. Yeah, so when you're sliding it all the way down, there should also be a bucket slot cover that's going to cover the space. There should be. Doesn't have it's not in all mechanisms, but most of them do. But there should be a cover here. So as you slide it down, this is gonna fill up, fill in the space. Depends on the make of the model. You know, to be honest with you, I don't know. I haven't checked. Okay, any, are we okay here? Oh, Donnie, are you okay? You're down? You're done or you're down? Both. You're down and done. You're down and done. Stop it. Stop it. All right. Upper GI small bowel. So again, this is the most common, common um, combination that we're going to do. So when it's done in, in, uh, as a combination, make sure I'm telling you this right. So the doctor comes in, does his fluoroscopic part. The patient is going to be moving around in all different directions, right? The doctor's done with his, uh, his or her fluoroscopic portion, and then you do your radiographic or overhead portion. Remember we talked about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the very, okay, now I should say the very last. One of the images that you're going to do, because we did mention this last week, is going to be a PA. Remember that PAKUB? Remember that? Okay. So the PAKUB is going to be one of the images that you will do to make sure it is included as part of the small bowel study. It has to be part of that. Okay. So patient is PA, KUB, where is the central ray directed? Two, Two inches, inches above. above the iliac crest. Mid sagittal plane too, so we want in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a high KUB. Now, when doing that PA, <clears throat> you're going to have your lead markers, okay, right, with your initials on it, and you should also be placing another marker on there. Now, again, it depends on the facility because you can go manually annotate, annotate, annotate this later on, but you should have lead markers with times on there to tell, to tell the doctor what portion or what time you took that image. Because a small bowel series is a timed functional, it's a functional procedure. Remember I said it's a bunch of KUBs? These KUBs have to be timed. Are you guys with me so far? Okay, so the KUB that you take right after the upper GI is usually 15 minutes <laughs> after the first inge ingestion of the 16 ounce of contrast media. The first 16 ounce with an, the first 16 ounce is taken with the upper GI during the procedure. Remember how we talked about the patient lying down in different directions and they're drinking the contrast? Okay? That's gonna be the first 16 ounce. Okay? So you're going to do your overheads. The first one that you're going to do here is a PAKUB. You have to take note of when time, what time you drank the first cup during the procedure. It's usually about 15 minutes. Okay, so your first PAKUB is going to be 15 minutes. Are you guys following me? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Now. After that, after that, I'm going to sit my patient up and I'm going to give them another 16 ounce of barium to drink. Because this one cup is not going to be enough to fill the entire small intestine, so I'm going to give them a second cup, but it's not until after I've done my first PA shot at 15 minutes. All right? So they're going to take the second cup. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna take the second cup. So they're gonna drink it fairly quick, I hope, okay? But now your next shot is gonna be your second 15 minute shot, which will be your 30 minute PAKUB. Don't 
The first one is done right after the upper GI. That's your 15 minutes. Got that? You're going to drink the barium. I'm going to wait another 15 minutes. My second PAKUB is going to be my 30 minute shot. Okay? We don't have to do the rotation every 20 seconds to go around. No, no. Okay, so I'm going to, that's actually a great question. So I'm going to get to that right now. So as you're waiting to take your shot, if the patient can't stand up and walk around, let them walk around because we want that contrast to move. Okay? So part of your instructions that you're going to give your patient when they're doing, you're doing a small bowel is letting them know that in between shots you're going to have them walk around. And so you're going to kind of give them a tour of the hallway to let them know what their parameters are. Ms. Jones, I want you to walk up and down this hallway. Don't go past that second restroom and don't go out the exit. Okay? You're going to be walking back and forth. Okay, so whatever, whatever however your, your department is set up, you're going to have them walk around the department. Now with that said, is it important that you give them enough coverage? Okay? So maybe the one gallon is not going to be enough. So if you know you're doing a small bowel series, make sure you give them two gallons. One for the front, the other to cover their backside. Okay? Because they'll be walking the hallways. We want them to make sure the contrast is moving around. So now you're going to bring them back for your 30 minute shot. Okay? How are you going to place them on, on the table? On their back or on their belly? Okay. Again, because it's a PA KUB, so it's going to be PA. Okay. Where is the central ray going to be directed? Same, two inches above. Two inches above. So, your first couple of shots is going to be a high KUB and done prone. So your first couple of shots, your 15 minute shot and your 30 minute shot is going to be a high KUB done prone. Now why don't we do it AP? Can we do it AP? There's no rule that says you can't do that. But why do we prefer PA? Okay, first of all your abdomen is close, puts it closer to the image receptor, right? Also when you're laying down, what's happening to your bowels? They're getting spread around. Okay, so the table acts as a compression to spread your bowels around to better visualize the, the, the insides. Okay? You guys, are you guys okay? So in 15 minutes, the barium reached to the small intestine, what do you mean? By, by the time, during the 15 minutes, you'll still have some barium in the stomach, and then hopefully, for sure, the duodenum is going to be, the duodenum is going to be filled up, <laughs> and then parts of the jejunum may be filled up in the first 15 minutes. By the time you reach 30, it's probably moved over here. Okay? Yes. We did one. Huh? We did one of these. You did one, okay? Nothing like what you're saying at all. Okay, well, I'm not. I'm not done. No, no, no I know. Because what? Because what I was also going to say is it also depends on the protocol. So what I'm telling you guys is the the basics. So so what happened? Hers moved. She was done after the second 15 minutes. It moved so yeah. fast. Yeah. Everyone was like. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. She got some mm -hmm. So there are some that takes as quick as 15, 20 minutes, because you've got a quick metabolism, and then you got those who take two hours, three hours, maybe six hours. We had one like that on Monday. You yeah. may also have one that's gonna stay as an inpatient, and you're gonna take your next KUB the next day. Yeah, so you had one that took how long? Yeah, me and Shane were just 260 kind of minutes. How many? 260 minutes. Whoa. Okay, let's do I, What is that in, in, in <laughs> What is that in hours? <laughs> 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 Okay. Okay, so, I'm gonna get you that. so what we're talking about here then is your average patient. Okay, this is just an average this is an average presentation because you will just like body habitus, you'll have individuals who have different motility of their abdomen, of their, of their bowels. So this is just a basic. <laughs> yeah, it's rare. It's rare that I see something that fast. It would, yeah. yeah. All the texts were like, 
Oh my God, she's done. Yeah. Like, well, why was she having it done to be? To she was in so much pain. Like, oh. they put her on her right side, uh -huh. go try to go faster. Okay. But go faster. Fifteen minutes <laughs> isn't fast enough. It was thirty. It was but, thirty. Okay. But the lady like really wanted to leave, so okay. after fifteen minutes, or after we did the sh the first one, uh -huh. we're like, oh, they like this, and then we left her. We, we did it, and we're like, oh, you're done. Okay. So. Okay. So. Going back to what you were saying, so I'm going to bring this up now. So again, in between, in between shots, you should have your patient pace around the room or in the hallway to help, help move that contrast media. Average time for the, the bowels to fill up with the contrast is about an hour. It's usually about an hour, and you're done with the small bowel, okay? So you have them walk around, but what if you have a patient <coughs> who cannot walk around? The patient was amputated. What if you have a patient that can't move? What are you going to do? There's a couple of things that you can do. Shake them. Shake them. <laughs> okay, now you guys are getting really, really fancy there. Okay. One thing that you can do is tilt the table. Okay. You don't want to tilt it too much because now they're going to fall off and you're going to have a lawsuit. Tilt it just enough. And the other thing that you can do is lay them where? On their back? On the right side. On, the right on side. their right side. So it empties a lot faster. And that's what you guys did. So it empties a lot faster. Okay? Now, in your situation, okay, if patient can't move around, did you do a PA or AP? Your KBs. Well, I wasn't the one in the room. I just, uh -huh. we were just noticing that he was still there. Okay, so again, pref preferably you want PA, but if you can't do PA, AP is okay. It's not set in stone. All right, so for the first hour, for the first hour, we, we generally do them in 15 minute intervals. So first hour, I'm sorry, for the first half hour, it goes 15, 15, okay? Your next shot will be 30 minutes. And then it says here, okay, you keep doing that, because by then, you sh the entire small bowel should fill up. Now, how do I know if the entire small bowel is filled up? Check the x-ray. Well, you take the x-ray, but how do we know when? How do we determine that it's, it's, uh, the procedure's over? When you can see the cecum? When the contrast reaches what? Cecum. The ileocecal valve, exactly. All right, so how do we know if it's reached the ileocecal valve? Well, well, first of all is, so this is one sequence. It's 15, 15, 30, that's your first hour, right? Second hour is gonna be 30, then 30, that's your second hour, and if it's past two hours, then you just take one every hour after that, okay? And each time you're taking those KEBs, you're showing them, you're showing it to the radiologist. He or she will say, okay, keep on going. Which means do your next shot in your in whatever it is, whatever your sequence is, take your next shot in 30 minutes or take your next shot in the next hour. But he or she will tell you to keep taking those KEBs until they look at that radiograph. I'm doing the old-fashioned way. When they look at the radiograph, okay, when they look at the radiograph and they say, Okay, set them up for floral, okay? When they say set them up for floral, that means they've indicated to you that they believe that the contrast has to reach all the way down to the ileocecal portion, okay? Now, you can't see the ileocecal portion in a, a good KUB, so what they have to do is they put the patient under the fluoroscope, and that's where the compression starts to come in, and they're trying to spread that area so they can see that little valve between the small and large bowel. Remember that ileocecal valve? That's why I'm going like this. It's really tiny. So they have to spread the bowel around to look at that little so valve. So after you do all this, all your sequences, mm -hmm. they'll come back in and do floral one more time to see that. You do one more time, mm -hmm. and I would say eight out of ten times they'll have you do, uh, they'll come in to do what's known as a spot film. Have you guys heard that? Spot film? It's called a spot film. So they do it under fluoroscopy, okay, to look at it and then they'll hit the trigger to make an exposure, and then you get your spot film of just that area. Did you guys do that? Did you guys do that? Ben? Yeah, I think you did. You did, and you guys did for sure, right? That's the very last shot, right? 
Yeah. And that's how you know that, it, that it's reached that portion? Right. So you keep doing the KUBs until the entire small bowel has mm -hmm. filled up and Actually, you... No. Oh. We went to the room, the room uh -huh. and we, he pulled it up and he's uh -huh. like, oh, she's done. Okay. So All right. <coughs> okay. Like, he would it. Okay. Yeah, eight, eight mm -hmm. out of ten times they, they do one spot film okay, to spread the balls around to focus on that EDLC filled out. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions here? All right, so when it reaches the elocecal portion, then we'll have them come into the floor room and they'll use, they'll use this compression cone. They'll literally just slam the floor tower on top of the patient to try to split the, uh, the, the bowels around to focus on, on that valve. Or you can use the compression paddle also to, to look at that area, okay? All right, any questions? All right. So what if it's just a small bowel by itself? Just a small bowel by itself. So now we're not doing an upper GI, this is just a small bowel. What do you think is gonna happen? Well, remember in the upper GI, they've already drank one cup during the procedure. So if it's just a small bowel, do they still have to drink two 16 ounce cups? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, two. Is it two? Yeah, two. Two 16 ounce cups. Yeah, so you have to do two of these two as well. Okay, at the beginning of the procedure, and again, <coughs> note the time that they first drink, you know, as soon as the bearing hits their mouth, look at the clock, and then time it. Did I mention that every time you have to do a KUB, you have to put your time markers on there? Mm -hmm. So you have to do your 15 minute, your 30 minute, your one hour, your one hour and a half, your two hours, three hours, four hours, so on and so forth, right? Okay. All right. Scalp, for just a small bowel, the same, high KUV. Your first couple of shots, okay, your 15 to 30 minute shots will be a high KUV. And then anything after that will be a KUV right at the iliac crest. And you continue with the prone KUVs until the entire small bowel is filled and then the doctor may do the spot film, okay, under fluoroscopy to focus on the ileocecal valve. Yes. So the first hour, it's a high KUB. Everything after that, it's a regular KUB. Right. It's usually okay. the first couple of shots, the 15 and the 30 right. minute shot, it's a high KUB. And then after your 30 minutes, okay, but, you, but you'll know. By looking at it? But you'll know by the radio graph, because if you see something filling up down here, then you'll say, okay, I need to go down to a regular KUB now. But otherwise, if it's still stuck up here, you're going to continue with those high KUBs until it's moving down here. Gotcha. Okay. Do we know how to do that? Do I need to spend time on this? You guys know how to do a KUB, right? This is just a prone KUB. Here's an example of a 30 minute shot and a one hour shot, okay? Um, make sure you have your inter time interval markers, uh, possible Trendelenburg to separate the loop, so that's also a possibility when you're doing those KUVs. And again, in between shots, you're having the patient <laughs> walk around, okay? Or some kind of activity to expedite the, the contrast to move, okay? So, when you're looking at this, you can't see the elocecal valve because everything is kind of pushed together and squished together. So this is where the doctor says, okay, put them back on the floor table, let's separate the bowels so I can see that little thing under fluoroscopy. Okay, because you're not gonna see it here, it's too convoluted. Here we need to put them on the table, spread it out so we can focus right <coughs> on that spot. Okay? Any questions, guys? Okay, intraplysis. Intraplysis is the third option of uh, performing the small bowel. Essentially what happens here is the tube, the special intraplysis tube is put down the nose, down the esophagus, through the stomach, through the duodenum, okay, until it reaches the distal portion of the duodenum. 
And then this is a special type of catheter where there may be a balloon <coughs> tip at the end so the doctor will inflate the balloon so that the tube doesn't accidentally get moved or dislodged. And then the radiologist will start injecting the contrast, okay? Will inject contrast and also what they're going to inject is either air or, it's not even up here, Metha, right here. Where? It's there. Yeah. Am I missing right. it? Yeah. Or right there. Okay. So air or methylcellulose. Okay. It's a type of it's a type of um, medication that causes air distension in the abdomen. Now, here's one thing that I want you guys to make note of. Highlight this somewhere in your notes that when you're doing an intraplysis procedure, it's double contrast. It's a double contrast study. So one is contrast, um, radiopaque contrast. The other one is the radiolucent contrast, which is air or this methyl cellulose. Okay. Again, this intraplysic procedure is generally done for ileus, suspected ileus, Crohn's disease, and also sprui. So the bowel loops are distended and the mucosal walls are better visualized using the double contrast technique. <coughs> the disadvantage of this procedure is because of that distension, it's very uncomfortable for the patient. And it does a little bit, uh, take a little bit longer for the contrast, I'm sorry, for the balls to be visualized, so it takes a little bit longer and also possible uh, bowel perforation during the advancements of the, the catheter. You can perf, you can perf the, um, the small bowel. How, how come it stays there? Because it's not like it's longer. I mean, you just put the tube in right away, so you're cutting halfway. Right, what's, what's happening is if they have Crohn's, you may not be filling up quick enough because there's a uh, Crohn's has, uh, the, the bowels are constricted. Mm -hmm. So the contrast is not moving quick enough. So we want again, let's just say that the constriction is proximal. We need to see the entire bowel. So it's going to take a while to go through that little tight space. And so because we needed to see the distal part of it too, for an example. So we keep on going until we can see the small bowel in its entirety, or until the radiologist concludes there is 100 percent obstruction, we're stopping. So it does take longer. To, I mean, you would think because the catheter's down there, it may be due to some kind of anomaly that's preventing the, the flow of the contrast to fill up the entire um, bowel. Do they use floral to get the tube in there, or is it just kind of freehand? Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. Yes, you you don't do it blindly. You have to do it under floral. Okay. <coughs> Why is that important? Because if you're putting the tube down here, what's going on here? Trachea. Trachea. There's two pipes, yeah. right? So we want to make sure that the tube is going down the correct pipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's done under fluoroscopy. Okay. And then the last one is just a feeding tube. So it's just like the intraplysis, but they use a feeding tube to put the, the tube down the stomach, and then we'll just push contrast in that. Again, what type of contrast that we use, it all depends. That's why we have to get good patient history. Okay, if it's not for uh, obstruction or other things, we can use con uh, barium. If there's suspected blockage, if there's suspected perforation, you want to use iodine. So the same indications and contraindications apply even when you're using a tube. Same applies. Okay? So, you want to make sure that in between shots, if possible, have the patient uh, walk around. If they can't stand up and walk around, you're going to lay the patient on the right side with the table tilted, if possible, in between images. If they come with family members, you want to also explain the procedure to the family members so they don't get worried and wonder why their uh, you know, loved one hasn't come out yet. Okay? Because again, it can take 15 minutes, it can take five hours. An average is about an hour, hour and a half for the entire small bottle to fill up. Okay, um, you want may want to give the patient something to read as they are, you know, waiting for their their images to be taken. They can use their uh, phone or tablets. 
make sure you have your time markers. If they're laying on the table, make sure there's something soft for them to lay on, because they're going to be laying there for a long time if they can't move. Okay. So with some things that the doctor may suggest, <coughs> if, the pay, if the contrast isn't moving around quick enough, the doctor may have you give ice, may have you give ice to, um, to the patient. Okay. May have them give tea or coffee because again it has the ability to increase the contraction of the bowels. And then iodine. Iodine is another uh, material that used that will increase the motility and contraction of the bowels. Plus, we also talked about one thing last week. What else can we do? Talk about, talk about food. Subliminal. Yeah. Yep. Talk about food. That'll also help. It's also mean, but. <laughs> All right, we're done. Ooh. Any questions? <laughs>